I'm totally a Rachel, but I'm also kind of a Cinderella, definitely from the Brandy movie, but with like a hint of season three Pam. If that makes any sort of sense to you, if you've ever logged onto Pottermore, if your parents have ever lamented the fact that your generation looks up to movie stars instead of them, not that that's a personal anecdote, stick around, get cozy. Because today we're gonna talk about why young millennials use pop culture to help us define our personalities and identities. We'll talk about how that affects us and really what the most important part about that is. And honestly, the reason that we do this is just really sweet and innocent and will make you a thousand times less annoyed the next time someone shares which office character they really are. Before we get into any more pop culture references, let's do a quick lesson in the two psychological things at play here. Narrative identity and personality, aka how you, as a human, define yourself. I'll let Kate McLean, a professor of psychology who specializes in how people construct narratives about themselves, explain. So narrative identity is the idea that we, as humans, construct stories about the kind of person that we are. And the way that we narrate those different experiences says a lot about who we are. It's a lot of individual differences in how we talk about our low points, for example. And through the process of considering all these events and how they fit together, we start to weave together a larger story, which is a life story. And narrative identity really tries to capture that storied nature of how we define ourselves. So do you think you're a loser or a winner? Do you think you're the hero or the villain? I think of personality having several different levels. So one level would be our personality traits, things like how extroverted or introverted we are. And it's really useful to understand our personality traits, so it helps us from an evolutionary perspective to know where we are in the group. You know, the wild card, the nice one, the one whose relationship you can't figure out. Both of these start to emerge in our development as babies, but narrative identity is actually postmodern. And by postmodern, I mean post-industrialization, in case you're not up on your eras of humanity. As we've been more mobile, less certain, uh, you know, less connected to our community, the stories that we tell ourselves bring more stability into our lives. So if you think you're a winner, that kind of gives you a blueprint for how situations in your life are gonna pan out. Even if you think you're a loser, Get in, loser. We're going shopping. there's comfort in knowing that you're a loser. But I'm sure you don't feel uncertain about anything in your life, right? You don't feel the need for everything to have a purpose. Right? So let's look specifically now why you, as a millennial, really feel the need to define yourself in more information that you would know anything about. Millennials don't live in their hometowns. They are twice as likely as boomers to not have religion or to not identify as a gender, and they take longer to get into serious relationships. Don't we know it? And if you're Gen Z, all of these things are even more true for you. All of these things, 9-11, 2008 recession, fortune spent on avocado toast, lead to the instability felt by millennials. I don't need to tell you this. These also lead to the lack of classic social connections, which means that we're spending more time with ourselves, getting to know ourselves. So to round it up, you're lonely, unstable, searching to be seen for who you really are. Sound about right? I guess I could use a little social interaction. And uh, what have you had at your fingertips ever since you've been sentient media. Millennials have grown up, and if we're 30, we're still growing up, right? With exponentially more media than the previous generations. We have thousands of TV, movie, video game, even book characters to look up to and model after. And we form bonds with these characters. Those are called parasocial relationships, and that is a whole other part of pop culture psychology. And if you were confused as to why media representation matters, ask a whole generation of gay men or black men or black women or indigenous people if they had fully developed characters to look up to as kids. And this, members of the jury, is the foundation of why we love to take and share personality quizzes. Personality quizzes, like the ones on BuzzFeed, aren't really telling us anything we don't know, right? We've spent a lot of time defining ourselves through things, whether it's an Enneagram or Meyer Briggs or astrology. And it's definitely interesting that the characters that we choose to define ourselves by have more than just personality traits, right? They have narratives and paths that we might align with our own narrative identities. Which like more power to those of you relating to the Game of Thrones characters because you're setting yourself up for a doozy of a life. In fact, Kate McLean hypothesizes that because adults already have the skills that children develop while they're exploring their narrative identities, we might be doing this exploration for that very sweet reason that I mentioned before. So if you are reading a novel or watching a movie and you see someone who's, who really you think exemplifies the way you see your life, that's an interesting imaginative task. Thinking about what it's like for an adult or an emerging adult to do this who already has perspective-taking skills developed makes me wonder if 
there's some degree of wanting to belong that comes with that rather than um, practicing something like perspective taking skills. We just want to belong. It's really sweet. And we take that desire to belong, that desire to be seen, and we share our quiz results, right? I mean, you share it if it's right. If the answer's wrong, then you take it again, and then you share. According to Kate, we think that we define ourselves, but it's being seen by others that makes us truly whole. And because we're all media and pop culture obsessed, these quizzes have become a shorthand for us to share who we really are. So if I say I'm an Angela mm. instead of a Pam, even though that sounds like a terrible personality, you know what I'm talking about. Which is all to say, Keep taking the personality quizzes. Keep relating to your favorite TV characters, even if their stories are insane. And, uh, you know, keep sharing those personality quizzes with your friends on Facebook. But make sure you're doing the work to analyze the bits and pieces. Don't just live out the life of your favorite TV character. I know it sounds stupid, but people do it. We may be lonely, media-obsessed souls, but we've been given a great opportunity to really explore ourselves in that position on the couch that's giving us all back pain.